Hello everyone, and welcome to Straight Chewing. Each week we watch and review a horror film for your entertainment. You can send all questions and comments to straightchillingpodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget to keep chewing. Shall we straight chillin', serial killin', five cold fillers on the mic, got you reelin', five star ratings from the floor to the ceiling, if you catch a one star, no time for feelings, got a demon DJ, all the ones and twos, by the name El Sabato, don't get confused, so grab a seat by the fire, roast them all over two, and prepare to hear the legend of the straight chillin' crew. What up, nerds? My name is Bob, and welcome to another mini cast in which we bring you a bite sized version of the show you know and love. Um, so, today we're going to be talking about uh, the new movie, Annabelle Comes Home from 2019. Uh, it's just me talking to you. Um, so, let's go ahead and get right into it. Uh, so, this, uh, this joint here was directed by Gary Doberman, um, and this is the seventh installment in the Conjuring universe. Uh, for those of you at home who are counting seven, holy cow. Uh, so Gary uh, Doberman was previ- previously a screenwriter on Annabelle, Annabelle Creation, uh, The Nun, as well as It and It Chapter 2. Um, he produced The Nun too, um, but this is his directorial debut here, uh, Annabelle Comes Home. Uh, so he's definitely all up in the Conjuring universe. So uh, going into this movie... Um, chronologically, I wasn't completely sure where it fell. So I had to do a little bit of research. Um, so, uh, first up, uh, the nun takes place in 1952. Annabelle creation takes place in 1955. Annabelle takes place in 1967 and Annabelle comes home. Uh, this movie takes place in 1970, just before the events of the original conjuring film in 1971. Uh, the curse of La, uh, La Rona takes place in 1973 and lastly, The Conjuring 2 takes place in 1977. So this movie takes place kind of right in the middle of all the Conjuring Universe movies just before the events of uh, The Conjuring, the original Conjuring movie. Um, so it pretty much starts off at the apartment that is shown at the very beginning of the first Conjuring film in which we were introduced to Annabelle the doll and she's sort of terrorizing the tenants. Um, and the the Warrens come over uh, to to investigate and they see the doll is... Uh, basically possessed or is being used by a demon because this demon wants a soul. Uh, so they extract Annabelle from the apartment. They take it to their house um, and they build this, uh, this sort of case that we see Annabelle in and all the other movies um, out of glass that they just kind of had on hand that came uh, from a church. Um, so they kind of construct this thing and put her in there and lock it. Um, and then of course they decide to just, I don't know, go the fuck out of town for the weekend. Right. And, uh, leave their daughter Judy at home with this super crazy evil doll that they just got. Um, and you know, they get a babysitter to come over and, um, and, uh, look after Judy for the weekend. And, you know, we're kind of told right at the beginning of this movie, uh, point blank that Annabelle is some sort of beacon for other spirits, um, on the, on the ride home. Uh, after the Warrens like take Annabelle, uh, you know, the car breaks down right in front of a cemetery, of course, uh, Maryville cemetery. Um, and all these ghosts just start like coming around the car and Ed Warren gets pushed in front of a, a semi truck that's speeding down the road. And I don't know. It's yeah. She, apparently she's like calling out to spirits. Um, so yeah, uh, the, the Warrens leave town for the weekend and, uh, we're kind of left with uh, Judy, her babysitter and her babysitter's friend, um, just sort of like comes over to the house uninvited and, uh, and kind of goes into the room in which they have all these super spooky haunted things locked away and starts messing with them. And, uh, and, uh, you know, crazy shit happens from there. Um, so that's, that's sort of like the setup of this movie. Um, overall, before I get into spoilers and stuff, um, overall, I think I'm going to give this one a 2.5. And it kind of like, it feels like right in the middle of all these other Conjuring movies for me. Like if I had to rank them, I'd probably go like The Conjuring, The Conjuring 2, uh, Annabelle Creation, then Annabelle Comes Home, and then The Nun, and uh, Annabelle, and then probably uh, The Curse of La Llorona uh, last. So it kind of like falls right in the middle uh, for me. 
so yeah, if you're if you're really into all these movies, then definitely check it out. But it, it's sort of um, I don't know. It's okay. It, it's not the 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 greatest Conjuring Universe movie I've seen. It's definitely not the worst. Um, but anyway, take that for what it's worth. And uh, I'm gonna drop that spoiler warning and get into the rest of the movie. Here we go. Spoiler warning. Alrighty. So uh, yeah, like I said. Um, uh, the babysitter's friend comes over and, and we come to find out that um, she recently lost her father in a car accident in which she was driving and she sort of blames herself for that. Um, so she uh, she finds the key, lets herself into the room with all the haunted spooky stuff and uh, it, she's basically trying to contact her father while she's in that room. She's touching all this haunted stuff, um, just seeing if anything's going to help her make contact with her dad. Uh, she finds like this prayer bracelet and she puts a picture of her and her father in it. And, um, uh, she, she opens up Annabelle's cage and takes her out and she's playing on the piano. She's typing on the typewriter. She's touching these coins. She, I mean, she's touching like literally everything in this room, just going buck wild, which I don't know why you do that because you are told point blank that everything in there is like terribly evil and like possessed. Like if it's going to help you contact your father, it's not going to be in a good way. Right. Um, so she's in there doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And uh, yeah, Annabelle like gets out of her cage and she's, you know, she wakes everything up uh, in the room. Um, and pretty much from that point, we're kind of, it felt to me as if I was just like sitting in, in like a pitch room with the director and he's just like pitching all these uh, various conjuring, conjuring universe spinoff ideas that he had. And he's like, you know, what about, what about this? What about that? So you just, you get like a couple minutes of like, spooky uh spooky things and you're you're kind of like uh you don't get much background for any of them you get like a little bit but not enough to really fully understand any sort of mythos and you don't spend enough time with any one of them to like really get super scared by them so let we can kind of run down them i guess so You've got uh, the bride, which basically there's this haunted dress that was, uh, you know, if you put it on, it, it kind of turns you into a crazy slasher, essentially, um, which we, we get a little taste of that. Um, there's the fairy man, which I guess is a spirit that would, uh, you know, fairy um, uh, dead uh, people over to like the other world, I guess. And you have to, he'll like steal your soul from you if you don't pay his toll which which I don't know what that is exactly. I guess it's coins. I, I don't know. Uh, there's the Hellhound, which is basically like a like a ghost werewolf, which looked pretty cool, actually. And he's like ripping through stuff physically, physically affecting his surroundings. So I guess if he catches you, he can actually just murder you, as I understand. Um, but also, uh, there's, there's a character called Bob in this movie that's sort of a uh, the babysitter's love interest, and he comes over and he he takes his acoustic guitar and just bashes this ghost werewolf in the face with it, and it like dissipates. So I don't know, like I guess it can rip through a car or whatever, but you know, it, the old acoustic guitar to the face, it can't quite handle that. Um, there's also a TV that kind of like lets you see into the future by like I don't know five seconds or so. It just kind of turns on, and as you watch it, it shows you what's about to happen to you. Basically, um, there's a samurai suit like a suit of armor kind of thing that it walks around and it looks super creepy, but we don't really get any information on it. There's a little uh, toy monkey, a wind up toy monkey that looks super haunted, but it doesn't really do much. There's a typewriter that just starts typing on its own. There's a piano that plays on its own. Um, and then of course we have uh, the Annabelle doll itself, which we get to see like the, the actual demon that's using this doll a couple times. And it does look pretty cool and it's pretty scary. Um, and there are like some pretty decent jump scares going through all of these different uh, situations with all these different uh, ghosts and demons. Um, but it's just sort of like rapid fire and nothing it nothing holds a whole lot of weight, really. Uh, but there is, uh, like I said, there's some decent comedy interjected. Like Bob is sort of a comedic relief, essentially. Um, and there's this reoccurring joke where they keep saying like Bob's got balls because he's like the ball boy for the basketball team and the football team. Um, and he's, he, before he bashes the werewolf in the head with his guitar, he's like standing outside on the lawn trying to serenade, uh, uh, his love interest. And he sounds pretty rough and like, he's, he's just kind of like fumbling through this song. This is kind of funny. 
And also at the very end of the movie, when the Warrens do come home and like everything's kind of calmed down, uh, there's a uh, Ed Warren sits down at his daughter Judy's birthday party with his acoustic guitar. And I was like, so hoping to get yet another Elvis cover. Cause I know like he plays through an entire Elvis song in the conjuring too. And people got kind of butthurt about that, but I thought it was kind of funny and I was really hoping they were going to do that again, but they just roll credits before he starts playing. So bummer. The movie's also, it, it's, it's intensely atmospheric. It's got a ton of fog, um, and it does some cool stuff with some of the lighting, but it's, uh, it actually looks too dark in certain scenes to where you can't quite make out what's actually happening. Um, and that could have been a problem with theater I was in. I, I guess I'm not totally sure about that. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was kind of, kind of difficult to see what was going on. Uh, and also like as like leading up before, before all the shit hits the fan, um, all these people in this house are experiencing spooky things independently from one another and none of them thinks that they need to share this information or what they're experiencing with the other people in the house even though they all are fully aware that there is a room full of haunted demonic shit like i don't know why they don't share that with each other you know and they're like asking like oh are you okay and they're like yeah of course everything's absolutely fine why wouldn't it be fine it just doesn't really make much sense to me and at, seeing that over and over again gets a little frustrating um but yeah overall this movie like i said it's okay i'm gonna give it a two and a half uh the rotten tomatoes on this the critics are sitting at a 70 percent. the users are sitting at a 72 percent um and cooters if we're talking cooters in this movie i think i'm actually going to cast a vote for annabelle the annabelle demon to be a cooter um because it it's super manipulative uh, in the fact that it's just like trying to get a soul and it uses like um the girl's uh dead father and kind of plays on that um and it, it it impersonates lorraine warren's voice on the phone um stuff like that and it's also uh I guess you could say it's very self-important, right? It's very full of itself because it's trying to take people's souls. You're not going to do that if you don't think you're very important. And also, the dress is a little played out, Annabelle. Come on. You're a, you're a tire. What the fuck? What are you doing? Uh, update that shit. Yeah, but that's, uh, that's pretty much my thoughts on Annabelle Comes Home. Um, I think if you're like trying to make a decision on something spooky to watch like this week, um, in, in the battle of these like uh, creepy doll movies. I think I would recommend child's play over this. Um, even though like child's play itself is a remake, it still, it still manages to feel more fresh to me than Annabelle cre or Annabelle comes home. Did it's just, um, this movie feels a little regurgitated. You know, we're seeing the same shit over and over, the same style of scares. Now child's play felt a little bit more fresh, which is kind of ironic. Uh, and I just had more fun watching it in general. Um, uh, but yeah, that's uh that's pretty much it. That's my thoughts on Annabelle Comes Home. Um, stay tuned. Uh, as per usual, we're going to have uh, a new episode coming out later this week. We're going to be talking about Midsummer, and it's going to be a full-length episode. Um, so until then, as always, everybody, please keep chilling. <laughs>